This tutorial is going to be about motion, scale, rotation, opacity, a bunch of the basic effects that are kind of preset for each clip under effect controls. So I will, I'm going to go to uh, any clip. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this title so we can see this a little bit better. So this clip here, I'm going to click on it. That takes us to our effect controls and you, it might be closed down like this. So you have motion options and then you have opacity options. So in motion, this is where we have position. So right now, the this is set at 960, which is that to 540. So if we double these, this one, don't worry about what that ends up being. But on this side, if you double 540, that is 1080. So that's uh, your 1080p resolution or 720p would be half uh, half of it is this marker right there because that would mark the kind of the midpoint here. So if I take 540 and I click, see how this little hand comes up and there's an arrow left and right. If I click and hold, just like the, what I showed in text, you can scroll to the right and that brings it down. And if I went to 1080, 80 that would be half okay that I moved it down to halfway if I scroll to the left and bring the numbers down then I'm bringing it up and obviously if I get to zero then that is halfway on the screen okay so that's how many that's 1080 lines of resolution that it has horizontally that's where the 1080 comes in so I'm going to put it back to 540 and if you can't get it, you can just click on it also and type the number that you want. And it goes back to 540. This side is your left. So click and hold and slide left and slide right. That's pretty easy. Go back to 960. Okay, scale, pretty obvious. You can shrink this down. You can expand it in. Uh, if you film something in 4K, for example, and you put it in the 1080 timeline, you can zoom in to, you know, 400% and maintain good quality. If you're on a 1080 timeline with 1080 footage, then, you know, you don't want to go much more than 100. It's going to start looking bad. Okay, so well, let's shrink it down a bit just for other examples. Okay, and then rotation. Let's click, and if you scroll right, it rotates that way. Scroll left, rotates left. Pretty obvious there. We're going to skip these ones. We're going to go to opacity. And in opacity, there's really two things we're looking at. One is, so it's at 100%, so we can see it. And if we scroll it down, then it looks like it's becoming darker. It's not. It's becoming more see-through. And the only thing behind it is a black image. So if I was, to, if I took this and put it over top of, wait, this is the one that we split the audio. And I put it over top of another clip now you'll be able to see that it's just becoming see-through so you can do some cool like transitions some cool effects with that which i'll show you how to do in a second the other one is blend mode and this kind of creates different opacities by itself so if i click i can go to screen and then it it does some you can just click through them and see what each of them does so uh, and they look different depending on the background because it makes it you know some sort of increases some contrast, adds some color, and uh, decides what things are see-through and which things aren't. So if you go to subtract, let's say there's the, the lights become dark and the dark things become light, so it kind of flips them around. I'm going to go back to normal for our case right now, and I am going to show you how to do animations. So for all of these things right here, this is toggle animation, toggle animation, you can animate all of these things so for example position um, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it back to 100% so we can see it so I can take this and I can if I want to change the position over time I don't want to just keep it there I want it to like slide across the screen or something I can decide where I want it to start moving so I'm gonna go um, right at the start of the clip so remember this you can zoom in and if you go right to the start of the clip, 
you hit this one here, toggle animation for position, and it sets a keyframe right here. Okay, so that means at this point on the timeline, it's at 96540. But at let's say halfway through, or a quarter of the way through, I'm going to set another keyframe, and this one I'm going to move it to the right. For some reason, I want it to go off the screen like that. Then maybe here, I want to set it so that it comes back a little bit, but it bounces up. Okay, and then at the end, maybe I want it to be back to 960 and 540. This is a really stupid looking animation. Um, the other ones I'll keep a little bit uh, easier, but I'm just showing that you can put multiple keyframes to make your your thing do anything you want. Okay, so if we watch it, there it goes, it kind of bounces around. So we just tell it at each point on the timeline what it's where it's gonna be. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that. And then now I'm going to do the same thing for scale. So let's say I want it to start at the same point. I would go here and I'm going to click this arrow. And that means it finds that keyframe. So when I go to scale and I hit toggle animation, it's going to put a keyframe at the same point. And let's say I want the scale to start like that. Scale, I'm going to keep a lot easier. I'm just going to scroll over this way and I'm going to and so if I wanted to find this keyframe, remember I can go back up to position and I can click this one and it'll find that keyframe. And then on scale, I can just add another one. And in this case, I'm going to change the scale to be smaller. Okay. So, but it's going to be more of a smooth one. And let's say I don't even want the position one anymore. I was like, ah, oh, that's let's, let's watch it first though. So it's going to shrink as it's going this time. Okay. Actually, that looked actually not bad. Okay, so we're watching it and it's doing the same movements here, but now as it's doing that, it's shrinking from 78%, like 78 on the scale, all the way down to 46. So it's doing both of those together. Okay, and then the next one, so I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna find this keyframe and I'm going to go to rotation. So I'm going to go, okay, so it's at minus three to start. That's fine. But I'm going to find this end keyframe again. I, I click that on scale to get to the end. I'm going to click another keyframe and I'm not going to rotate it crazy. I'm just going to rotate it back to five. So we're going to watch it again. So now as it goes, it's going to be rotating back. Okay, so that's that one. And then my last one, I'm going to find that opening keyframe and I'm going to go down to opacity and I'm going to keep it at 100% to start. I'm going to skip to the end with one of these other ones. I'm going to hit another keyframe and I'm going to bring this down to zero. So now as it's doing that, it's going to also disappear. So it's going to go and it's gone. It's worth mentioning that with opacity, that text is a really good one to use. So I'm going to make this um, text bigger on this one so we can really see. And so if we went back to opacity and we go to that blend mode, and let's say we just pick something like multiply, you can see that the, the white, like the blue is kind of see-through a bit, but the white is. So if we changed this title to the fill being white and the stroke being black you can you can see an application there where the what's inside the text that was white is now the part that's see-through and you can see that that could be a, a a cool way to use opacity